Hello, and welcome to my video about my full adder. So, in case you didn't know, this is Besiege. It's a fantastic game. Buy it if you don't have it. And it's really fun, and I built what is basically the smallest little computery thing, even though it looks really quite big and awful. But, thanks to Blue Danes on Reddit, who asked me to make uh, a gif of this, that I decided to do a video anyway. Um, basically just showing how it works, because he doesn't have this game, and he should buy it, or she, whatever. But basically, uh, you can hopefully see my mouse, um, if not, these sort of three gears lined up on the left hand side are A, B, and C, or A and B are two different inputs, and C is the carry. Do you know anything about a half adder? If not, search it on YouTube. Pretty easy to find some basic stuff explaining how it works. And I'm basically going to show this machine in motion, and it's going to be really terrible because it's slow. I have it set to 39% speed because I couldn't get the slider directly on 40. And yeah, let's get this started. It's going to lag for like a minute because this is just, it's a lot going on. It's, I forgot to check, but it's over 700 parts, so. Basically what happens is, while it's still sort of getting in shape, I have an XOR gate over here, an XOR gate over here, and this is similar to an XOR gate, except it's just two AND gates and an OR gate connected together. Um, yeah, and then all this gibberish over here, these large gears, that's just my way of taking some small input bots and moving them around to the whole device, so theoretically you could hook up multiple of these together by putting inputs into A, B, and a carry. And it would distribute it through the whole machine, but it's really big and bulky and... Yeah. So, let's get started. I'm gonna hit uh, on my row of keys, number one, which will be my A input. So you can see right there, it's starting to turn. And now that gear's going, you can see this weird mess of bars and spinner joints and big gears going. So the stuff is happening over here, except this is NAND gate, so nothing interesting is happening over there. Let's quickly get to the action before stuff happens. So, oh, I've already missed it, but uh, that back gear there came up and is now power flowing to here. This gear has gotten started, made basically transistor type things, and is now powering this large gear, which was stationary before. And again, sending an input over there, but end gates, nothing interesting is happening over there with only one input. And this large gear is now powering this one here, and you can see this guy moving up. And uh, not quite making it. This isn't the most reliable machine. Uh, it has a little bit of an issue. I have upside down gears and right side up gears beside each other. And the way they start off doesn't really connect. Like, you can't place them side by side. So it's a little iffy trying to get these working together. Especially because if you actually look at how much is happening, it's a lot for just the small, fairly few powered gears I actually have to get this whole machine running. So we're just going to watch this guy struggle for now and hopefully not miss the whole thing. Um, basically, this full adder ends out with this input output sorry, closer to me being the sum input and the other one being the carry. The idea is that when you have A and B, this gives an output, and the carry basically goes on to another full adder. If you were to have multiple full adders going on and be able to add together larger numbers than one and one, um, and I guess, well, one and one and one with the carry, but really, you don't really need a carry for your first full adder because there's nothing carrying it in. It's like when you are doing regular math and adding in like 6 plus 5 doesn't just give you 1 you carry over to the next decimal place. Ah there you go! Yep it's finally working as you saw that guy finally got up and then was able to activate this last one. Um, the way I have this end set up with these extra powered gears is basically just to allow m the sort of current type thing to flow out more and basically act as a repeater because the more gears you try and hook up together the harder it is to get going, the whole, you know, lots of mass, moment of inertia, all that kind of thing. 
Um, so I have these repeaters to actually get a signal that can keep going because if the gears are too far away or have too many gears in between, they won't be able to actually spin these propeller guys fast enough to actually move up and be able to go through the thing. So now I'm going to switch from just the input of 1 to the input of 1 and 2. So as you can see back here, now the second gear has started to spin. And now this is where interesting things are happening. So, over here, this XOR gate should shut off. As you can see, both the inputs with the fans on top are down, effectively shutting off these AND gates. I mean, this still has some momentum, but that'll eventually stop. So now this whole thing should eventually shut down once these things are slowed down too much. This fan should eventually fall here. There it goes, perfect timing. So now there is nothing powering these bottom gears, so that fan should fall, and that is really perfect timing. So now this gear will eventually spin out, but because these gears have low friction, it'll go for a while, but this is effectively off, as there's no power to the output. So if this were hooked up to anything, it would slow down about as effectively as those other gates and so now that these two are on the interesting th interesting happens over here interesting thing I'm sorry um, so what happens is these get anded together and go to this output which is of course forward with the and of the carry and the output of that XOR uh, all this you can find just by figuring out how full adders work um, the point of this video isn't necessarily to explain all that oh, I'm sorry I just jump to a new block um, so now that those are anded together, you get this one, which is the carry. So now, this single bit... Oh, I'm sorry, I just exploded. This single bit um, full adder, I'm just going to stop this, is now producing an output of 1, 0, as in a two decimal... Or a two, sorry, uh, digit output. It's now the output of 2, because I'm giving it to 1. Um, the idea is, obviously, uh, you need multiple of these together to get a larger output, uh, but what I'm going to show you now is I'm just going to restart this, wait for that initial point of lag, and then I'm going to put on all three inputs and show you that both outputs are on. Of course what I did before with the at the very beginning with just input one on, you could do that just as well with input two on instead, but I think now is a good time as I need to start, try all three inputs. Um, apparently not, that exploded. I do have Invincible turned on, um, but it's it's having an issue of, and you can see Invincible's on there, um, it's not necessarily that any of the parts are breaking, it's the fact that, like, the connection of the braces are breaking, and I'm finding that's actually a, a fairly annoying issue in this game, is that uh, braces aren't perfectly strong so I'm just sort of no it's ah this really isn't working um, it's really unfortunate it was earlier and at least I showed you that the inputs just one and then one and two was working um, really not sure why it's having so much trouble right now but as I was saying before sorry the braces the fact that they aren't perfectly strong connecting to something it's really annoying because it means a machine like this on Invincible can still break, which I feel like is just not right. So, hopefully it's not going to break this time. I got all three on, so this back XOR gate, um, nothing interesting should be happening over here because this should be outputless, which it appears to be. And so should this XOR gate. Uh, actually, no, I lied. This XOR gate should... Uh, have an output because of the carry and because A and B are on, both of them are on, this should be getting bored um, no sorry ended of A and B and connecting to the output as you can see it is um, and that's really about it. You could also do the carry and an A or a B that's a little confusing but carry and A and carry and B work together to create a 1-0 output, 
this is now a 1 1 output. So I'm adding three ones together and I'm getting the binary equivalent of three. So this whole thing is a big jumbling mess. It's really confusing, really fragile, really laggy, but is a I think a pretty decent proof of concept of the idea of computers and besiege. But the thing is to create anything as complicated as you can find in Minecraft, you'd probably need a supercomputer to run. Because this is just so much more fiddly than Redstone is. But it's working. So I guess I could run it at a much lower speed, like 5 or 1%, and add up a couple of these. Um, but, you know, it's functioning. I'm going to let go of the outputs or the inputs, sorry, and see all three of those stopped. The machine's going to take a while. That's the other problem is to make an actual computer, the other thing you need is a clock. And as you can, well, sorry, uh, you need a clock to actually run things and synchronize all the outputs. The problem is the clock delay in this would need to be huge because the transmission time from input to output is pretty significant, especially turning it on takes a while. Off is a little quicker because it takes longer to rev up the propellers enough speed to get them to move up, but it's pretty easy for them to lose enough speed to fall down. So, clock inputs would have to be pretty slow. It'd take forever to do any sort of actual computation on this. But, as you can see, all of these four propellers are down, meaning there's no power to these outputs. They're just spinning of their own momentum. So, effectively, they're off. I don't have any sort of fancy mechanism to stop them faster, because that's just more parts, and this has too many. So, this has been my full adder. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, 745 pieces. Some of these bars are probably redundant. The braces, sorry, not bars. Yeah. Um, but I was just trying to be thorough and make it look pretty neat. I think it works pretty well because you can see what's going on. Uh, if at this point you've lost interest in what's going on with my full ladder, you can leave. But I might just talk a little bit more about the different part. So let's just focus on this one XOR gate. Um, again, if you just do some YouTuber Googling, you can find some sort of circuit diagrams explaining what XOR gates are. But I found an image. Um, I took a course on this a while ago, but I forget a lot of it. But basically, uh, an image that had two inputs, both connected to AND gates, where one is inverted on each of them. And then the output of that is ORD. So I have, as you can see, A and B here, where in this AND gate, on the closer side, A is inverted, B is not. And on the far one, A is not and B is. Because of these propellers, which are the, what are they called? Flying block. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's a creative name. Um, they naturally lift it up, and the propellers are done in a way, as you can see, opposite from these ones. Now the spinning actually pulls them down. Um, so that effectively works as a knotted input, and that means that if one is on, so if A is on, that will go up, B is off, so that stays up, and you get the end gate. Uh, or the other option is B is on, and that goes up, and A is off, and that stays up, and you get the end gate. And of course, both of those are ORed, so if you have A or B, the output is on, but if you have both on, both these uh, inverted propeller inputs go down, cutting off the AND gates. So both AND gates are off, and you get an OR gate output of zero. And then this is literally the same thing, except that starting block isn't there, because I originally built an XOR gate, saved it, and then started a new thing, and I had to build another one, and I just, I take issue with this starting block, because it, it just it's hard to make it look nice in any sort of build. But basically that's the same thing. Uh, this guy is the same thing, except it doesn't have the inverted inputs. And also, as you can see, this takes four separate inputs. Uh, the output of that XOR gate, coming from there to there. The carry input to the other one. And it's the sum input, basically, of that XOR gate. It's sort of like a half adder. Is anded with the carry, which is then ORed over here with A and B. And that's 
basically how a full ladder works. If this has been a really poor explanation of how a full ladder works, I'm sorry. And again, just try and find more stuff explaining it better. But I think the video is done, I guess. Feel free to leave comments, questions, concerns. I don't really know. Do whatever you want. This is a sandbox game. That's literally the point. I spent way too much of my life working on a small computer that will never amount to anything because this game is so laggy with large machines. But I had fun, and hope you guys and girls do too. So, bye.